Hey everyone, Trucker John here. So just a quick update. Uh, we left Florida, went to, uh, where did we go? Brendanton, we went to like Brendanton, Florida. Went all the way to Oklahoma with that load. And uh, we did stop by in the uh, Springfield Terminal. Got to meet a herdable trucker. Let's check this out. Hey everyone, I have Herdable Trucking here. He is also on YouTube. On, uh, really cool guy. Make sure you check out his channel. I'll put a uh, link to his channel in the description below, so please Great. check him out. Tell him a little bit about, about yourself. Well, joined Prime back in January. Um, I've done a great many things in life, uh, you know, and I've been loving my time here at Prime. Uh, it's been a great experience here. Uh, everybody's been great. Training's been great. Um, out here on my own now and just talking with you about, you know, our miles and, and our, 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 our fleets and things like that. Yep. And it's been great. It's great meeting you as well. And I've followed your videos so much. and. Um, just a real pleasure to be here and great to meet you and uh, hope to see you all on the next video uh, feel free to sign up and subscribe and like the videos it means a lot to us both John and I Absolutely. Um, so uh, please uh, subscribe and like the videos because it helps us encourages us to do better as well yeah definitely check him out I, I just got done telling him and I haven't told nobody this yet but Rob Lowe has actually been watching my channel and his channel that's great so that's actually some pretty good news so <laughs> yeah that's, check that was out. very exciting news when you <laughs> told me that that's great yeah, yeah. so uh, but yeah shout out to uh, Rob Lowe and and everybody at the top here Absolutely. prime for providing such a, a great uh, structure and foundation and support system for us to come here and thrive in this new career and reinvent ourselves because uh, both uh, John and I we're not you know we're no young bucks anymore <laughs> and, um, you know but uh, it's been great and so if you're really thinking about trucking I just Really, Prime has been uh, an amazing experience from top to bottom. So, That's so right. uh, have no fear, have no reservations. Just bring your A game. You know, just come here ready to work, ready to learn. You know, but without great turning time. this into a recruiting yeah, video, yeah, totally. Definitely, just be yourself. And uh, hey, use one of our driver codes. Whoever you like the best, go go ahead and do that. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you down the road. All right, see you later. All right, and then after uh, Oklahoma, we dropped off and picked up in Oklahoma. And we are now in Texas, heading to California, heading to uh, Colton, California. So we just stopped here at this quick rest area, use the restroom. We're gonna continue on here in a moment. Just wanted to uh, give a quick update. Haven't really been recording too much. I've been a little under the weather and uh, just busy as usual. So I got the kids with me and uh, once we're done in Colton, California, we're gonna head to drop them off at home and continue on with our journey. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we're gonna stop by the, uh, the Big Texan also. It's almost become a tradition. Every time we come through Texas, we gotta stop there if we have time. And today I think we do have time, so we're gonna go check it out. That sign back there says, keep off, do not climb, because it's like it's incline. And uh, you probably want to listen because this sign here says, danger rattlesnakes, stay away from rocks and tall weeds, which are right here. So we definitely don't want to go venturing in anywhere and running into a friend that doesn't like us. Pretty sure you would hear them rattling if they were scared. But we got too close to them, but uh, if you hear them rattling, it might be too late if you got that close. Check that out. There's a prime tanker. You don't see that every day. So there's the, uh, the tomahawk steak. I've never tried that one. Tomahawk bone and ribeye. We have a look at that one. So we're definitely uh, making this a tradition every time we pass through here. As long as we have the time, yes, Lyle, no hippie trucking and transportation. As long as there's time, we will stop at the Big Texan. So that's what we're doing today, and it's going to be good. Got about uh, four hours left on my clock after this. 
So we'll see what kind of food coma I'm in. We'll try to make it. Like I said, I've been a little under the weather. That uh, Disney trip really took a lot of my energy. And uh, yeah, we were soaking wet most of the time there. So even though it was hot and humid, still not good to be soaking wet. I mean, my socks, from my socks to my hat, I was wet. So uh, yeah, staying like that the whole day and then plus the air conditioner running in the truck, just not a good combination. Here we are, back again. Here we are, inside the Big Texan. So I showed this to you guys last time, and here's where they make all the meat. And this is where uh, you sit to do the 72 ounce challenge, and we actually have a contender here. It's got 32 minutes left on the clock, it looks like. And uh, we'll see how much food he's got left. Yeah, so what's your name, man? Oh, I, I got him right. Alex, thank you. I got him. <laughs> I got him with a... Uh, I don't want to disturb him. He's got a full job ahead of him. We'll check in with him again later. <laughs> Good luck, man. <laughs> so just like tradition, we're going to go ahead and get a half order of fried mushrooms and I'm going to get the half order of the mountain oysters. And we learned our lesson being here three times now. You see, uh, the wife and I got the uh, big Texan ribeye and we got the, I think we got the RJ's Texas cut last time. JR and I got the Houston cut, which is a 36 ounce. And we just, it's just too much food. So I'm going to go a little bit smaller this time and go with the 18 ounce Dallas cut. Uh, even though I got three mouths here to feed. I think, uh, I think this is going to be enough. Definitely not as much as that 72 ounce. Just checking on him real quick. He's got 25 minutes and 25 seconds left. He still had a lot of meat left. 14 minutes left on the clock over there and the guy didn't make it. He decided to give up, unfortunately. So, uh, Alex, if you're watching this, man, I was rooting for you. Oh, well. Um, so I was talking to the waitress, little inside tip here. Um, if you do the challenge, and you sit up there at the table, it costs 74 or 72 dollars, 70 something. Maybe 72 since it's a 72 ounce steak. Uh, 72 dollars to do the challenge. Uh, but if you wanna order the steak at your table or get it to go, it's 250 dollars. So it's better to go do the challenge and only pay the 72 dollars, Not whether you finish it or not, at least it's still a little cheaper to do it that way. Uh, so JBG Travels, if you're watching this, that's why it costs so much for you. It's because you had ordered it to go. But if you had sat up there at the table, it would have cost you $72. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so we made it here to uh, Kingman, Arizona. We're just about an hour from the California border. So we're uh, just about to get back to California. Today, our appointment is actually tonight at 7 p.m. I'll tell you what, it felt great to sleep in today. Uh, usually I wake up 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, always on the road at least by 5 a.m. And it's currently 11.30 in the morning. We've just been kind of relaxing and we took showers and yeah, I wish I could always do it like that. But I know tonight's not going to be that great because I have to find parking tonight in Southern California. Uh, so what I'm going to try to do is I'm delivering at the Walmart in Colton, California. So what I'm going to try to do is, uh, once they're done unloading me there, I'm going to try and find a hiding spot on property. And hopefully they don't kick me out. <laughs> uh, if they did, then oh well. I, I'll just have to go travel a good 40 minutes to an hour to somewhere to park, which is going to suck. But it is what it is, especially Southern California. Prime, if you're watching this, please build a terminal in Southern California. That would be amazing. Uh, all right, so that's it. Here we are. Like I said, Kingman, Arizona, this little loves travel stop. Uh, it is currently, according to Calypso, according to Calypso, it's 118 degrees. Now, of course, that's with the black truck absorbing all the heat. It's been sitting here all morning. Uh, this might be a little cooler than that. Uh, but nonetheless, it is hot. We, we went out there to take showers. We went out one more time to get a refill of our drinks. It's hot. It's warm. 
Uh, but you know what? I will take this heat over that Florida heat with the humidity any day of the week. 118 degrees is actually tolerable compared to that 90 degree, 100% humidity. That was just miserable. Everyone's just chilling on their devices. All right, let's get down the road. Good morning from California. I am currently on the I-5 North, passing exit 319. Exit 319, if you were to get off right there and head towards the east, uh, there's a small little town called Lemoore, California, which is uh, in Kings County near Fresno, California, Central California area. Uh, fun fact about Lemoore, there's a naval air station there. My dad was stationed at that naval air station when I was born. So I was born on a naval installation there. Lamore NAS. Uh, grew up for the most part right there on that base. I don't remember it because I was too young, but I do remember when we moved down to Long Beach, uh, there was a, um, a naval station in Long Beach. It's not there now. It's completely demolished and I, I don't know, I'm, not even, I'm not even sure what's been built there since, but uh, there's the naval base is no longer there in Long Beach where I grew up. Uh, anyways, so yeah, we made it to California and uh, made it to Colton, made our delivery, and they didn't have nothing for me coming to Northern California to drop off the kids because we are ending our summer tour here. Uh, so the very next morning they had something for me. And it's the first time since I've been with Prime that I got to my O1, my my shipper, and uh, I couldn't find the address. Well, I found the address. I, you know, it was uh, 2304 South Lilac Avenue. I found that, but uh, the company name on the building was not what my orders said where I was going to pick up. And sometimes it happens, you know, sometimes it's a different name. They ship it under a different name or whatever. So I walk in, I go in there to the sh shipping receiving office. Hey, I'm with Prime. I'm here to pick up. They're like, oh, that's not us. It's like, oh, okay. They say, well, we shared the building with another company on the other side of the block. And it's the same address. So they okay, I'll go check with them. So I go over there and same thing. No, we, we don't, we don't ship with Prime and we don't ship to where you're even going. I told them where I was going. Like, yeah, no, sorry, not for us. So I was like, okay. So I'm, I went to the next building over and went to talk to their shipping receiving. It's the same thing. Nope, you're not for us. So I felt like a, a salesman going door to door asking if they wanted to give me something so I can so I could work. <laughs> uh, so I, it was a little, a little, a little frustrating because, you know, I, I don't want to be late. My appointment time was 8 in the morning and it's already 8 o'clock now. You know, I, I started looking for this place about seven in the morning so anyways uh, I called dispatch dispatch gets with sales and we're trying to figure it out and so I go back to the very first place where I stopped where they said I was in the wrong place and I went in there and I and I asked to talk to somebody else that was in charge because it says this is where I'm supposed to be and sure enough it was so they uh, kind of took me as a priority over everyone else that was getting loaded because of that issue. So they got me loaded pretty quick. And that load went up to Fresno, not Fresno, uh, Porterville, which is just outside of Fresno. A small little town in the middle of nowhere. I've never even been in that area. I didn't even know that part of California existed. I mean, it's a good sized little town, Porterville, but uh, it's like you get off Highway 99 right after Bakersfield. I forget which, which highway, this little highway takes it, 57 maybe? I can't remember. But you go about 30 to 40, mi 30 to 40 miles into the middle of nowhere, and there's just this town sitting out there, and it's nothing around it. It's another 30 or 40 miles in any direction, really, before you get to something. So I get there to Fresno, I drop off, and 
I'm thinking, okay, I'm in Fresno. I'm about halfway home to drop off the kids. They're going to find me something in this area to get up to Northern California. Nope, they give me a, a load going right back to Colton, California, back to that place where I first came. It's like, oh my goodness. So now I'm kind of like stuck. Well, do I go drop the kids off first and then try and rush and make it to my appointment on time back in Colton, California, which is going to be about an eight hour round trip. And so I said, you know, I don't want to risk it. So I'm going to go, I'm going back to Colton with the kids uh, to pick up this load which by the way isn't until the day the next day so I'm really like late dropping off the kids I'm supposed to drop off the kids two days ago already so I get back to Colton California and uh, I uh, check in my appointments at 4 p.m. so I check in around 3 p.m. and they said oh no your your load was canceled I was like oh great and of course, no one told me. So I called dispatch and say, hey, this load was canceled. They're like, okay, we'll get you. There's a lot of loads coming out there. We'll get you another one. So they did. They got me another load that was loading at a... Uh... This guy wants to speed up right when he saw I was going to pass him. Don't you just love that? Uh, anyway, so yeah, uh, they, they got me another load pretty quick, like immediately. So I... I got out of there around uh, 10 o'clock p.m. So now I'm heading up to uh, Northern California to drop off the kids with this load. This load is going to uh, Mankato, Mankato. Man, I know I'm not saying that right, and I know I've been yelled at by you guys before. However you say that, Mankato, Minnesota, that's where this load's going, but I'm dropping it off in Salt Lake City because I'm going to be attending uh, an ACE 2 class with Theo. Theo and I are going to be taking a class together there in Salt Lake City on uh, on August 10th. So dropping out the kids and heading there. So that, that's that's where we're at. That's what we're doing. I uh, just want to give you a quick, quick update. As you see, I'm driving overnight, which I don't like doing. Uh, it's about 5.30 in the morning. I started driving around midnight try to get a little rest before I started driving that way I had enough hours also to get me past the Tahoe area because really in Northern California kind of like LA not too many places to park the truck and I don't have time to stay at home to park the truck at home so the only other option would be there's a few places there's a place in Stockton there's a Loves in Stockton uh, I think there's a Flying J there also and then Sacramento, there's a truck stop. But those places are all just nightmares to park at. You know, I try to avoid those at all costs. I mean, I don't like truck stops to begin with, but those those areas, man, I just, I try to avoid them. I'd rather get past those areas, get back, get up in the mountains, get up into like the Lake Tahoe area. There's uh, some really nice rest stops there. And if I have enough time on my clock and enough energy in my body, I can make it all the way to Reno Reno's got some really large truck stops, and I'd rather stop there on my way to Salt Lake City. So, but that'll be in another video. Uh, this video is gonna be about to end once I get home to drop off the kids. Just gonna do a quick recap and end the video. So, see you guys a little bit. So we made it home. We made it home. JR's there waiting for us. We're here in the truck getting ready to get unloaded. Load all of our stuff out. I'm gonna get a few supplies. I'm gonna continue down the road. I'm just dropping them off and I'm leaving. Gotta be in Salt Lake City by tomorrow morning. So, uh, what'd you guys all think about the, the trip so far? Fine. Was it good? Yeah. Would you guys want to do it again? Yeah, probably. Yeah, okay. Probably, maybe not. All right, so Jordan uh, split his trip. So he went with me earlier, as you guys know, and then they, they went together with me on this one. So Jordan <clears throat> did his map. He did a total of 20 states. Jasmine, on her map, she did a total of 22 states. JR did 24 states, I believe, when he was with me, but I think he was with me a little longer. Jazz was with me the second longest, and then Jordan the third. Uh, and Jasmine came in at about 12,600 miles. Jordan came in at about 11,000 miles. And I think, I can forget what JR was at, but I know he was he's a little higher than that because he was with me longer. Uh, so that's it, guys. That's the end of our summer tour. Uh, we had a blast. As you know, we, we did New York. We did a tour to Wisconsin. And we went to Disney World. So, yeah. it's good stuff. All right, guys. 
I gotta keep on moving here, busy stuff. 